I'm Diane with Sew Batique, and today I'm going to share with you how I made this patchwork rayon top, which is the simple elegant tee and our rayon remnant pack. And I also have here another sample made with the color Lake, which is an option that you can buy our rayon remnant packs. There's about six different color variations that you can select from. And yesterday, we also added on our website the combination of the Rayon Remnant Pack and the Simple Elegant Tee as a fashion duo, so you really get a savings when you buy the package together, okay? In addition to these two items, you need a very few things to actually make this top. You need a scissor, pins or pattern weights, a tape measure, and I like to recommend um, the top stitching needles about an 80 12 size when working with our rayon and um, coordinating thread that you might have at home already because remember what we're going to do is we're actually going to either sew or serge all of these strip sets together and then we're going to cut out our pattern we're going to add our facing and then we're going to hem it so whether or not you use a serger or a traditional sewing machine that's your choice it's just a simple top to make, okay? But what I'd like to do first is talk a little bit about the top and how to plan it just a little bit before you start laying it out and trying to figure this out. I did have to do this a couple of times just to make sure that I was doing it the right way that I liked to do it too, okay? And I'll share that with you. Okay, as you can see with the top that I'm wearing, I really just had a random color selection from the tuxedo brass brown pack that I had. I had one goal in mind and it was to make sure that my um, piecing went all the way around the garment. I wanted to make sure that the seams match down the side as they do here in the blue and so I had to make sure that any of the fabric that was at the front here was also the fabric that we used on the back of the garment. So everything matched flowing up to the shoulder. Now, I'm gonna show you the pattern so that you can see what I'm talking about first on how to lay this out. If you're unfamiliar with the Simple Elegant Tea pattern, it is one long pattern. There is no shoulder seam at all. And if I were to lay this over the top of this garment, you would see that the shoulder line is here, your sleeve is here, and then the body of the garment is laid on the fold line that you put on your fabric, okay? And so when you sew this, you are stitching up the arm, you're adding a facing to the collar, and you're hemming it. Now, why is this pattern piece important when you figure out your fabric for this? Well, for one, I wanted to make sure that the fabric that I had on my shoulder here was the center of the garment. So this fabric piece here is going to lay right along the shoulder, okay? And then I'm going to have matching fabric going down the sides until you get to the hem. And that's how this garment is made. So it's one shoulder fabric and then equal fabrics going down because I wanted my seams to match. So once you get, actually I'm gonna take that package. Once you get your pack opened up, I do recommend washing the fabric. I do pre-wash, even though they are strips of fabric, it's good to make sure that you get rid of any excess dyes and wax. And I recommend a product called Synthropol from Pro Chemical, which we do have on our website. Or um, if you don't have that and you really just have to start this project, um, use Dawn Dish Soap, um, the super concentrated. And um, it has some of the same uh, results that you would have if you use Synthropol as well. So in a pinch, you can use that. So the, when we open up the package of the rayon remnants, open them up so that you can see all the different widths. Our rayon packs, they are a random strip pack. So each one is gonna have a little different width to them. 
organize them so you feel comfortable with a color rotation in a garment. But the only way to do that is to see what you have in the pack. And no two packs are alike. We really try to get as close to possible as possible to the image that we show on our website. But we may run out of one of the browns and then we replace it with a different motif in the same color. So generally each one is going to look very, very similar. And then at the bottom, there's always a piece of cardboard, which you can use for scrap. Okay, so each one of these is a different width. And once you have them all washed, make sure that you iron them up so that you're ready to organize them into your top. Now, I have already taken a few minutes to organize another strip set to get us started. So I'm going to set these aside and bring those over here. Okay. And I've already put together a little bit of a rotation and it matches the top that I'm wearing right now. So you'll see the similarity there. And I think it'll help you understand how I did this. I'm going to set this aside for a moment here. Now, as I said, I like to start with the center shoulder fabric and I used a, in this one, I used a brown and I wanted to make sure I'm going to bring back this pattern just so you can kind of see where I'm headed with this. It'll be positioned on the fold over here. So the shoulder line on the pattern is here. And I made the round neck, not the V neck on this pattern and the round neck hole will be there. So the next strip of fabric is going to fall slightly down on my back and I'm going to tear this one here a little bit shorter because I want to start another fabric right in the front. So with that planning, I'm just going to take a snip on the salvage, move my pattern away and tear. The reason I tear the fabric is simple. First of all, it is the easiest way to tear a woven fabric straight on grain. If you attempt to, to cut this with a scissor or a rotary cutter, it will not be straight. So the easiest thing to do is clip the salvage and just tear it. So this fabric will be my center shoulder. The next one I selected was another brown. And that one is narrower as well. It's about four to five inches. None of the strips that I pieced together are, are more than five inches, except for the hem right here and the shoulder piece. Those were the two that I wanted to be a little bit wider. And the rest are just accents and random between two and a half, three to three and a half inch strips. And each one of the fabrics that comes in the rayon remnant pack is going to be wide enough for the two strips that I've decided I would like to use on this garment. So the next one, and you can be precise and measure with a ruler. I don't. When I make this, I just sort of want to make sure that I'm building enough fabric to lay my pattern piece out. So the next one, I think I want it to be about three inches and allow yourself your quarter inch seam. And so I'll just tear the next one. Fold it in half. And I'm going to lay it right next to this first fabric, which is going to be my shoulder. I'm going to do this one more time. Okay and set the rest aside. You will have leftover fabric from the rayon remnant pack after you make this particular top. If you're not using this pattern, you may use more or less fabric, but with this particular pattern, I ended up making another tank top out of the fabric that I had left over. Okay, and then the next color is black. So that's the one that runs right along the top there and this I want it to be pretty thin but it came thin in my pack so I'm just going to fold this in half 
I'm going to make sure both sides are the same width. Snip it and tear. Lay that out next to this side, which is going down the front of the garment. And this side of my strip set, which will be going down the back side of my garment. And I'm going to continue doing this until I have each one of the fabrics cut and in position. Okay, so this one is this wide. I'm going to measure the one I just cut. We'll snip for that because we want them to both be the same width on the front side and the back side. Otherwise, our seams are not going to match on the side. Okay. Now, just a reminder too that the fabric that comes in the pack, we try to make sure that there are eight to nine different fabrics, and they are all of different widths. And equals about three yards of fabric. And I think you actually get more than that because some of these are quite wide as well. I think I have two more fabrics and then I'll show you how we lay this out before we stitch it all together to make sure we have enough fabric to fit the entire simple elegant tea pattern on top. Okay, this black one I did do a little bit more narrow, so that's going to be maybe two and a half to three inches. And then I want to make sure it's the same. I'm going to have just a little bit left on that one. Okay. In the front. You end up having a little bit of thread around you. You'll get used to that. And now the, the fabric that I used on the hem, this had to have been because I allowed for about a 5 eighths of an inch hem and I surged the bottom of my garment and then just turned it up once and then top stitched on it. That's how I finished this one off. And so this is about five and a half inches. I am going to measure that one. Five and a half. And then lay that with that to make a matching size. Okay. an extra one. We'll lay this down on the front where the garment front will be. Now remember these are not stitched together yet so this is just going to give us an, an estimate to make sure we have enough fabric because if we need to add another strip to each side the front and the back we can do that, oh goodness, see what I mean by string? Before, we can do that before we actually sew all the strips together. Now, I've kind of staggered them so it will represent a little bit of the seam that you would have on each of the strips when you sew them together. So the center of the shoulder and the neckline will be here. This then presents the front of the garment and this will be the back of the garment. 
Let me grab my pattern piece. Okay, so this, well, we're overlapping a lot here. So pretending that this has been sewn together now, this will be your shoulder positioning. Okay, now the edge of, I'm using a, I'm wearing the dolman sleeve. The pattern itself has three different sleeve options. The garment pattern without a dolman extension piece on it, that's the dolman extension piece itself, but without it is a short traditional t-shirt sleeve. And then there's also an add-on extension for the kimono sleeve as well. Okay, so then you position that exactly on the top of it and use your pattern weights to secure that. Okay, so I think I would probably need to add one more strip in here or make them a little bit wider before I sew this whole thing together. So we want to make sure that the top and the back or the front and the back of the garment fit the fabric that we're creating. The other thing, now let's assume that all this is sewn together and you're ready to cut out your pattern. I always make sure that I have this pattern on the fabric in the right position. I only test one spot and it's this hem right here or the, the seam right here, the very, very bottom one. I want to make sure that the line that I have here on my pattern piece is the same distance away from the next seam, the strip seam, in the front of the garment as on the back of the garment. So I take my little tape measure and I measure both of these positions. If each one of these strips are the exact same width and they are laying in the same sequence, once these are positioned and sewn, each one of these will sew together and make your perfect seams. Trust me, <laughs> it'll work. Now, if you don't wanna be as precise as what I am trying to be, then it doesn't matter what sequence, what width strip, anything, will go. It doesn't matter. Um, and it can be as strip pieced as you want. Um, you can turn this the other way. You can have your stripes going this way, you know, up on you. It just doesn't matter. But I just wanted to show you the way that I did the top to make sure that I could get a garment that had a really nice, pleasing color rotation of fabric on the front that the seams matched at the side and around to the back, okay? Once you have all of this cut out um, and ready to sew, I will recommend one thing. The pattern calls for a bias strip for the facing. And you would need to lay this straight on grain on a bias like this. Um, the fabric that we are piecing together is really not something that I would use for a facing. It has too many seams. You run across way too many seams if you were, were going to use the pieced fabric. So buy um, ready-made re ready bias tape that is like a single fold bias tape. To, that is all you need. And that's what I used in this top and what I used in this one. Or if you have an extra piece of rayon or cotton at home that you can cut your bias strip out of, feel comfortable doing that. Um, it doesn't, ha it's hidden, you never see it. It just is what you need to have to, to finish off your bias neckline, okay? But that's all this pattern is. And if you're um, wanting to make one out of a two yard cut of rayon fabric without any of this piecing, again, that's how simple this garment is. And I think it's an amazingly fun and pleasing and attractive garment. So I hope you understand how we put this together with our Rayon Remnant Pack. And we're gonna come out with some more ideas with skirts and different ideas that you can use the Rayon Remnant Pack. It's three yards. So make a jacket, make um, anything and have fun. And hopefully you'll share some of your projects with us. Enjoy.